Jesus and said, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now, one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When you read Dante's Purgatory, which you should, if you haven't read it, that's something you should read. <clears throat> and it's, um, you've probably heard me speak about it before. But for Dante, he's, he's a metaphor, right? This isn't something he literally believes, but in his metaphor, Purgatory is a mountain. And to ascend that to God means to climb this mountain. And it's an analogy both for what purgatory will be like, but he's also telling us something about our life right now. That to, to be in God's presence, you and I have to be purified of sins and certain things in our life. And what I want to talk about tonight with that is that the very first step for Dante is the hardest. On each level of the mountain of purgatory, you conquer a different vice or sin. Or you become a better person. <laughs> Only with the grace of God. But the very first level is the hardest. It's, it's the one where the, the climb feels the steepest, and it's the most difficult. And the sin of that very first level, does anybody have any guesses of what it is? Pride. It's pride. Pride is the beginning of the Christian life. Overcoming pride is the beginning. And you might think it's the opposite. You might think, well, well should that be at the top? And, and I think you can make an argument for that. But Dante puts it at the bottom. Because he says the first thing, if you're going to be a Christian, the first thing that you have to admit is that you're not God. And believe it or not, that's about the hardest thing there is. It's easy to say, isn't it? We like to say when we make excuses, right? I'm like, oh, my home is going to be terrible because I'm not God. <laughs> um, but really what it's about is that man wants to be God. I was at this marriage retreat all weekend, and no one usually thinks this way. They don't think very um, intentionally this way. But human beings, what we tend to say to God is, I know best. And that's what sin is, by the way. The Catechism says that. The Catechism says every one of our sins, every time, brothers and sisters, that we sin, we may not be thinking this explicitly, but God has this plan for our life, and He says, My son, my daughter, here's what's best for you. But we think we know better. They always say, right, you've heard priests probably say this, that the theme song of hell is Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way. <laughs> um, which, by the way, I was told today, Father Goble told me that um, Frank Sinatra apparently had great remorse at the end of his life for ever singing that song. And that he really repented of that song. Um, which is beautiful. But what's the point I'm driving at? If you want to understand human beings, you have to understand the garden. Adam and Eve, when Eve is tempted, what does Satan say to Eve? He says, if you eat of the fruit of the tree, you will be like God. 
And I really invite you to pray about this. Brothers and sisters, that's, if you want to understand yourself, you have to begin by admitting that you want to be God. You want to determine how life should be, where you find fulfillment, and how the world around you should operate. That's all of us. But all of that belongs plainly and simply to God. And what tonight is about is Jesus Christ is our King. Brothers and sisters, the first step in becoming a Christian, the very first step, and it's a step you have to retake over and over again, is you have to remind yourself you do not know everything. You are not the standard of all truth. You are not God. And people who know that are the most wonderful people on earth. They're so easy to love. They're not offended very easily. Right? The, the, the natural thing for all of us, by the way, I'm way too, right? If someone like, I don't know, someone like cuts you off or something, my natural response is, do you know who I am? <laughs> I'm God. <laughs> I don't really say that. That's how we feel. People who are humble, they know they're not God. They know they don't know everything. They're not easily offended. When they're corrected, when they make mistakes, they're okay with that because they know they're a creature. So that's the first thing tonight, is if you're going to be a Christian, you need to look in the mirror. Look in the mirror every day, or maybe don't look in the mirror. Maybe look at a crucifix. And remind yourself, I am not God. I do not know everything. I am not the standard truth. Here's the second point tonight. And this is the more important of the two, actually. The way that power works in the world, right? Tonight it's talks about power. Jesus is a king. Kings have power. We just got through an election. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm so tired of the manipulation and the power games and the lies and, and the struggles. There's a great irony in all four Gospels, the moment of Jesus' coronation, right? If you were God and you were going to be crowned a king, well, the moment I would choose in the Gospels to be thought, when is Jesus going to be king? I probably initially would say, maybe in the Nativity when the, the three kings come and they bring the gifts, or maybe at the Transfiguration. I mean, think about that. In the Transfiguration, Jesus radiates light more beautiful and pure than any light anyone has seen. That's probably the moment I would pick. But it's not. I'm wrong. It's not what it is. In the Gospel, all four Gospels tell us the moment that Jesus is king is on the cross. That is the place that he reigns from. And there's all this irony, right? Jesus, think about it. In John chapter 12, Jesus says, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. Yeah, that's a kingly image. When a king is crowned, they would lift him up and everyone would come to him. But of course, the moment that Jesus is lifted up is when he's crucified. He has a crown. <laughs> that before he's crucified, the, the soldiers robe him in a purple cloak which is the color of royalty. He's given a scepter. And of course, over his head, and this is so ironic, John's Gospel is the best, you have the INRI, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And we're told that it's in three languages, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, which for the Gospels mean all the world. And the, the Roman governor proclaims all the world that the true king is a crucified man. Brothers and sisters, open your hearts. If you want Jesus, if you want to take that sense of humility, the way to do it, the best way to do it, is to realize that God didn't come into your life in power. He doesn't just come to you and say, get on your knees right now. I'm God, and you're not. Obey. 
Instead, he empties himself. He does the opposite of what we want to do. We want to become God. Jesus desires to become man. To humble himself so that you would be obedient to him, not out of fear, not out of sure awe, his might, but that you would be obedient out of his love. The place where most kings reign is from power and authority and wealth and all those things. Jesus reigns from weakness and from love. And that's our, that is our feast tonight. I want to leave with one last thing. There's so many places we could go, Lord. Jesus, you've heard me say this before, Jesus' main theme in the Gospel, the main topic he talks about, more than anything else, by far, not even close, is the kingdom. When tonight, the Our Father, we will pray, Thy kingdom come. And brothers and sisters, my challenge to you tonight, tonight is the last night of the liturgical year. It is the ending of the church here this weekend. Uh, Jesus died not just so you could go to heaven. He died to bring a kingdom. And the kingdom of God is not simply us dying and going to heaven. The kingdom of God is meant for this world. The kingdom is the place where men and women love God and obey Him. That's the kingdom of God. And Jesus died to bring that about. Thy kingdom, not, we, as I've said many times, we never pray, uh, Our Father, our heaven, hallowed be thy name, get me out of here into your kingdom. Right? We pray, Thy kingdom If you love Jesus, if he has come to reign in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, in your body, you and I should be people who help bring that kingdom here. That's what Christians do. Right? We don't just care about our own salvation. We care that God would reign on earth, that he would reign in every heart, in every mind, in every soul. And so, Jesus, tonight, Lord, help us to know that we're not God. That we don't know everything, that we are not the arbiters of truth. That it's okay if things don't go perfect for us. Lord, help us to be awed and amazed at the love which brought the kingdom of God to earth. Help us to love your cross. And Jesus, we pray that we might help you to bring here on earth your kingdom.